Hello, everybody. Welcome to Build Fly Go. Another week of airplane building and uh, more more progress, believe it or not. So we are right now um, finishing up installing the main landing gear weldments, which are the big white uh, pieces of steel that the uh, main landing gear attached to inside the inside the fuselage. And also the last couple little bits of uh, ribs and, and, and little structural parts that need to be riveted on in the front. Very little is left, as you can see, right? We're just sort of uh, going through the list of outstanding items that uh, are ready or primed or, or things like that. So there's the, those are the steps that are just behind the wing. You just saw us working on them. Um, just behind the wing that you step up to get on the airplane, the airplane sits fairly high, so um, having a step on an RV-10 is uh, pretty important. Um, our RV-9 and uh, most of the nose wheel model RVs tend to have steps as well, um, only because you, you don't want to step on the flap, which is right there, so it's a bit of a step up. Uh, there are quite a few uh, tailwheel RVs that uh, don't use steps, and that's, you know, that's fine, it's a little easier to climb up on there. But anyway, you can see us uh, sliding it in and sort of fitting it and uh, just sorting out the, the hole. Um, the mounting hole for the step is not drilled. There's just a little pilot hole on the on the weldment. So you measure the, the angle of the step. Um, you slide it in and uh, you need to sort of take off material on the on the skin so that you can slide it in the right, the right amount. And then you drill... Um, you drill the hole in the in the weldment. You use the pilot hole to drill through the step, and then you enlarge it to the size of a hole. Of course, while doing that, you scuff up all the paint on the <laughs> on the step, and uh, you add it to the pile of uh, things to touch up with primer. So the next part that you see us working on there, there's a bunch of parts piled up on the back of the fuselage. There, those are the front. Uh, top of the airplane. They're the it's the panel where the uh, avionics go, and also the uh, the sub panel where the sort of the the line replaceable units or the the avionic things that are not screens go, which are behind the panel, and also the structural components up top there. There is also a brace that you make out of a piece of angle, which is what I'm doing right now. Um, and uh, I had to make it three times. Uh, there's a bent piece in there that if you bend just slightly too much or slightly too tightly, you break. And uh, I got to say, this was a little frustrating for me. Uh, so I, I did it twice, and uh, then I wasn't sure if I had a, another spare piece of angle. Um, this uses the eighth inch thick. Uh, angle and it's it's not as common in the RVs. Uh, it's for the Landrons, um, and it turns out it is also for the seat backs for the rear seats, which is what saved me, because I didn't uh, I didn't use the seats the RV seats. Oh, there I am making another one. The RV seats in the uh, RV nine. I used uh, seats from uh, uh, a seat manufacturer from Classic Aero, and uh, so I had leftover. Um, angle, uh, which was just fantastic, right? It saves me from having to order stuff. Um, so that worked great, and uh, I was able to make the third one is the charm. I was able to make the third one, and it works fine. So there's the panel. Um, panel's in the front. Panel doesn't have the um, plastic peeled off of it, and there's the top skin. The panel doesn't have the plastic peeled off it because I haven't decided yet what to do with the panel. Um, I may do a... Uh, custom cut panel just like I did for the RV9 where I used the van's uh, metal and shape and I just have it CNC cut and all that kind of stuff or I might use one of the fiberglass slash carbon fiber you know fancy panels out there um, the advantage of doing the carbon fiber and, and I'm sorry the advantage of doing the regular van's metal is uh, I already have the panel it's um, a couple hundred bucks at most uh, to do the cutting and maybe another 150 bucks to do the powder coat and the laser engraving and then it's just labor on my side and it's stuff that I don't mind doing so no big deal so that would be maybe three four hundred bucks versus if I get it done with one of the fiberglass or, or carbon fiber ones those panels are a thousand dollars plus just for the panel and then the finishing work uh, I would still have to do the laser engraving if I wanted to do the engraving and you know and things like that so it's a savings of at least a thousand dollars uh 
and I, you know, like, and I, I like the the vans uh, set up, right? I think it's a it's a spot that maybe I'll save the money. But anyway, so there is the. Uh, we're starting to dimple everything and get everything, getting everything ready. Uh, yep, this is assembling it all. Uh, you can see me deburring all of those parts, and I'm going to dimple them all. And this is going to be one of the last parts uh, of the fuse. Yep, we're getting ready for prime. One of the last parts of the, the fuse before big changes come. And there's a bonus section in this video. Uh, usually I do Saturday through Friday. I did Saturday through Saturday this year, and you'll see why in just a minute. So this is Friday night right now. I'm priming uh, Friday night or Thursday night? Thursday or Friday night. I'm priming outside, uh, which is because it's it's nice out. It's it's you know it's warm, and uh, you get everything primed. Yeah, there's a step got primed again. <laughs> and here we go. This is Saturday. So. Um, Riveting all, all the nut plates and getting the little things uh, done here. And uh, Mary is going to show up pretty soon. Yep. Get Oh, yeah, there's that uh, that part that got bent and done three times. <laughs> and uh, getting all of that stuff riveted together. And then here we go. Mary shows up. So we're going to rivet the, the sort of the side wings onto that sub panel. And then the top skin uh, gets riveted, just like any other skin, right, from, from the back. We make a little frame for it to clamp down the, uh, sort of the, I guess those ribs, right, like the triangular pieces. And that is the front top of the airplane. So you'll notice that we're going to rivet all of the, the skin on, and then we're going to plop it on the airplane and click it in place. Um, we're not going to rivet that on the airplane, probably for another six months. It's just much easier to work on the avionics with that um, that section off of the airplane. So it's, it's going to stay clicoed on the plane and in place for, of course, the cabin top and, and all of those other parts. But it does come off um, when, when avionics time comes around, which is, I'm going to guess, uh, nine months away at this point. Nine months seems like a reasonable estimate. So there we are. It's it's all riveted together and it's clicoed in place. And uh, we're installing the, the steps, the final install of the steps. They're bolted in. And uh, the last couple little bits, there were a couple of bolts on the main landing gear weldments that were also uh, missing. And then it's cleanup time. And uh, you'll notice that I had already primed outside uh, once this year. Um, and the paint booth comes down. We need the space. And it's just, it is what it is, unfortunately. So no more paint booth. Uh, we did decide to throw out the plastic, reinstall the window. And here we go. Next is mating the fuselage halves together, which is super exciting. You'll see that next week.